Peace, beautiful being. It's Sharice from Collective Light, and welcome back to More Than Asana. I just launched this podcast, and it pretty much is going to be our first real episode today. And I really wanted to focus on just sharing my own yoga journey uh, with you so that we can better understand each other, um, really make this more like a friendship exchange so that you kind of understand more of the background of where I'm coming from when explaining my perspectives and experiences in my experience. <laughs> um, so pretty much, just getting right down to it, I started to learn about a lot of new age um, principles back in 2017. Um, I was introduced to the idea of dimensions and that's kind of the beginning of where all of this perspective and understanding what it started. Um, having that kind of a light bulb come up in terms of dimensions made me realize that there was more to this world than what is presented in front of us right here in the physical through our senses. Um, and I really wanted to learn more about it and dive more deep into that information. So the internet was right there for me and there was endless amounts of information out there and I had to really decide and discern the things that were true for me and the things that I could leave for someone else to take. Um, so pretty much that was around 2017 and then that's when I started getting into the practices of meditation um, and understanding the importance of my breath. Um, knowing that there are many different articles out there that like to share how you can tap into these other dimensions. One of the main ways that resonated with me was through meditation and through breath work because it allowed me to get rid of the noise that was in my head, allowed me the opportunities to really make an effort to take time to myself and to just really let whatever comes up come up and trust my intuition in whatever it is that it wanted to share with me at that time. Um, I didn't fully understand the terms or you know the whole ideas of what I was doing at that time, but I just delved deep into the practice and kind of let it be whatever came up for me at that time. When I started getting into those meditation practices, I was all over YouTube. I was searching for anything that could bring me peace at that time, anything that could take me out of my head, anything that could just bring me into more of a space of stillness. And when I was on that hunt, I was also tapping into more spiritual practices of understanding what it meant to tap back into your ancestry. And um, that is around the time where I was introduced to comedic yoga. I was on YouTube and I was searching for something that I could really resonate with because honestly I don't, I didn't resonate heavily with the Hindu gods and goddesses that a lot of the yoga practices emphasize on um, here in the West and in the East, um, just in the practice altogether. And I definitely respect their stories. I definitely um, love to learn about their perspectives and their um, influence on the world around us but when it came to actually connecting with them as guides or um, connecting with them on uh, on an ancestral level it was really hard for me to have that connection and I didn't really understand why and when Kemetic Yoga came into my life that's when I realized that there was more to yoga than I even knew that had everything to do with my ancestors. And I came across Kemetic Yoga through Yasser Rahotep. Um, he was the one who brought it over into the West and introduced Kemetic Yoga, sharing that um, the poses were on the hieroglyphs that are in Egypt and that our Egyptian ancestors have been practicing yoga long, long, long ago. And so I really resonated with that. And that was my first um, encounter or um, feeling of my ancestors actually being present with me at that time. Um, as I was practicing, I always felt like they were making themselves known to me. And that's when I knew that this was something more than 
something physical. So this was around 2018 when I started to get into Kometic Yoga and I would practice it every day. Um, I was really just so enamored at how influential uh, incorporating the awareness of your breath with each transition into the moves was so pivotal in my um, self-awareness and I just couldn't stop. <laughs> and I loved um, every bit of what yoga had to offer, even just regular practices. And that's when I started working at 24 Hour Fitness. And that was my first actual yoga class that I went to. And although it was uh, more on the physical side, the instructor still managed to incorporate a lot of the breath work in there. And just knowing, based off of my own practices and then incorporating what I was learning from there, I fell in love with yoga instantly because it was a physical practice that had everything I was looking for at that time when it came to my healing, when it came to meditation, and when it came to um, emptying out the mind and finding more stillness and calmness in your day, getting rid of those distractions, but also still incorporating the strength and the uh, body awareness that it takes um, to do that. I loved it, I really loved it. I loved it so much that I wanted to teach it to other people because I felt like so many people could benefit from it and I wanted to see more people practicing around me um, that I could share that experience with. So I looked for one of the um, quickest <laughs> yoga teacher trainings but also at that time um, on, at a personal level I was going through a really major breakup and I was also relocating at that time back home and kind of having a reset in my life having to reflect on where what my purpose was here reflecting on where I was going um, I felt really lost at the time there was so many things that came along with the research that I was doing and just knowing the truths of the world that it just started to really take a toll on my reality. And um, I found myself probably at what I would consider at the time my rock bottom. And because I was going through um, a breakup that was really um, prevalent in my push towards that healing space, I um, really began to do it on a daily basis. <laughs> I was like, this is what I have to do right now in order to just be better, um, be able to find the gratitude in each day and just keep moving forward into whatever I was going to come next because at that time I was very much in a faith-filled situation, not sure what was going to come next. And so I still had that drive to teach and incorporate yoga, but I was also doing my own personal practices to help myself. And with that, I went to um, Core Power Yoga in Berkeley, and I really enjoyed them because they offer the payment plans. In Norma AC, it's so hot in here, so yeah, it's gonna be making those sounds every once in a while, forgive me. But at Core Power, it was a beautiful experience because I got to really dive deep into um, opening up my throat chakra, I was really, I'm such an advocate for the chakras, and I had already done my own self-study at the time, and I was really trying to heal and open up and balance my throat chakra, and I felt like taking yoga teacher training would really help me in speaking my truth more, sharing with my voice, that's part of why I'm doing this podcast as well, and I loved it, I loved, um, what I learned, I loved the people I was around, and I became a 200 hour um, certified yoga instructor from Core Power in 2018. And then I had a whole idea of what I was gonna do. I had, um, I, live in, I lived in the Bay at the time, I grew up in the Bay Area, and I wanted to move back to Sacramento because that's where I went to college. And I wanted to go back and start my autonomous life out there. 
Um, so I did. I moved back and I did so with the intention of working with someone that I really respected in the yoga space. Um, when I found them, I felt like their message and their their drive towards bringing more people of color into the yoga space, I really resonated with that. And I wanted to be a part of building that up a little bit more. And there was some uh, connection at the time and it was great. I learned so much from that experience and I really, really loved um, being around people that had the same vision and really wanted to just share yoga with everybody. But sometimes things occur in the business space and I had to move forward from that and I uh, found myself not really teaching for some time, still doing my own personal practices um, and then trying to really jump from place to place to find my space where I resonated. I went from different studios, starting out with working in the, the parks and teaching in the parks. I went to different studios, dance studios, fitness studios. I worked and taught in these spaces and I just never seemed to find my place. There was always something that I was missing because I had already been doing so much of the spiritual side of the yoga practice that when I found myself in stu the studios, I was seeing a lot of the politics, if that's the word you want to say, um, in these spaces and it just kind of was hard to stay in those and stay true to myself. So um, I found myself just going from one place to the other and not really finding that stability that I was looking for. And now I'm still kind of in that same space of trying to find where I should be planted and I guess part of it was always being called to YouTube to find those people that may resonate with my form of teaching. And so I was really called to have this podcast because I know that the physical practice is so beautiful and you can gain so much from it just from even doing five minutes of yoga. Um, but I also wanted to bring out more of the other aspects, the other um, practices that have nothing to do with moving the body and really dive more deep into sharing those, but also learning from the experiences of others who do this practice in their daily lives, maybe do karmic yoga or um, kund even kundalini, you know, there, there's so many different genres, but there's also so many different personal experiences. And I do think that is one of the main reasons why I love yoga so much. And being able to hear the stories of others is something I just revel in and love to do, love to listen to. And moving forward, I really hope that I can share more practices that can allow us to tap into those spiritual spaces because I can't always explain the feeling. These are things that you would have to go in and practice for yourself and feel for yourself and I can only share what I've felt and what I've experienced and that's why I'm here and I would love for you to be here as well and I just always want to share that this is a open space this is a respected space and all opinions are valued all truths are valid and valued and thank you for listening if you've made it this far to my experience um, I look forward to sharing more yoga with you moving forward and please don't forget to subscribe and like the video it really helps bring this um, video around to those that may resonate with it as well and I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your week. Also, if you would like to do any type of meditations and really get started on that practice for yourself, I do also have a playlist here that is that is curated for you to be able to just press play and go right into a meditation with me um, so that you can take maybe five to 10 minutes to yourself and get rid of those outside distractions. So if that's something that you want to partake in, there should be a video coming up for you to click on. And other than that, 
have a beautiful rest of your day.